What up everybody, Instruct the Beats back again here with another Place Value Street lesson. Today we'll be using our knowledge of place value to write numbers in expanded form. So let's walk down the street and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to write numbers in standard form and expanded form by using my knowledge of our positional place value system. So if you haven't checked out our understanding place value, please check that out. That way you really understand what's going on in this lesson today. All right, so first of all, let's norm on some math vocabulary, right? So what do I mean when I talk about standard form? When I talk about standard form, I'm talking about writing numbers like we normally see them. Using our normal digits, right? Putting them in the place value, 342, 342 and 5 tenths, right? Just how we normally would see them, okay? Expanded form is when we write a number by showing the value of each digit in the number, right? Going back to our previous lesson, writing what is each digit contributing to the overall value of the number, all right? So check it out right here. So here we have our place value chart. And again, I'm gonna make this a little bit more complicated than I need to, because this is very easy, but it's easy if you can just kind of take the shortcut, do it without thinking about it, but I really want you to think about why it works first, right? And then you can, obviously do the shortcut too. So it all goes back to understanding that our place value is based on powers of 10, right? So this would be the ones place, the tens place, right? And then the hundreds place, because that's 10 times 10. So in standard form, right, this number would just be 234. We don't typically write the decimal unless there's a decimal uh, number afterwards, right? If it's just a whole number, we don't write the decimal because we always know it's there. It's just kind of a waste of ink, right? Now for our expanded form, we're going back to talking about how we got the value of each digit, right? It's the digit, so we had two, let's start with the two in the hundreds place, right? Two groups of a factor that's based on the position of the digit, right? And this is in the second position to the left of the ones place. So it's actually in the hundreds place, right? We know 10 to the power of two is 100. And so the value of that would be 200. So our first digit is contributing 200 to the overall value of the number. Now the easy way to think about this is it's two into the hundreds place, so you have 200, right? That's kind of the shortcut, the easy way to think about it. Now we have a three, and again, we're multiplying by a factor that's based on the position of the digit. And the three is the first power of 10, right? It's one position to the left of the ones place. And we know that's just 10, right? So three groups of 10 would obviously be 30. So the three is contributing a 30 to the overall value of the number. And again, the shortcut would just be that three in the tens place is three groups of 10, which is 30. And then of course we have our four ones. And that's expanded form. Just showing what each digit is contributing to the overall value, okay? And sometimes, though, you'll see it in super expanded form, which is why we take the time to really teach you um, how this works and not just the shortcuts. Because when you do a super expanded form, you're really writing down the digit and then the factor that you're multiplying it by. So, for instance, instead of writing 200, you had two groups of 100, right? Because it's in the hundreds place. Then you're going to add that to three groups of 10, right? And then you're gonna, and then the four, right, was four, and we multiplied that by one because it was in the ones place, so four times one. And so for super expanded form, you just kind of show the digit and then the factor that you are multiplying it by, right? So again, pretty simple, not too hard, really goes back to our positional place value understanding and making sure we know what we're talking about. All right, so here's our I do, okay? We have 234 and 25 hundredths. So my two, right, is in the second position to the left of my ones place, which is just the hundreds place. And so two groups of 100 would be 200. In super expanded form, we would write the digit, right? And then we multiply it by the factor 100 because it was in the hundreds place. Then the three is in the tens place, right? So three groups of 10 would be 30. And then right here, right, three, and we're multiplying that by 10 because we multiply the digit times the factor based on the position, which is the tens place. And then of course we just have our four because it's in the ones place. And then we'd have four groups of one for our super expanded form because we write the digit and the factor we multiply it by. And then there's a couple ways to do the decimal. You could write it in decimal form. So we know the two is in the hundreds place, right? Because it is two positions to the right of the decimal in the one. And so we could write down two hundredths, or you could write, oops, 
two hundredths in decimal form. You're really going to see both of them, so just know that you could see it in fraction or decimal form. I like to write it in fraction form just because it's a little bit less messy. So we had two in the one hundredths place, which my digit is two, and we're multiplying that by a factor of one one hundredth. And then my five is in the thousandths place, so that would be five one thousandths. And then again, five times one one thousandths, okay? So pretty simple. Again, just understanding the positional place value system that is the base 10 system. All right, so let's do this we do together, okay? So I actually gave you the super expanded form, okay? And so we're gonna have a, a number that has one, two, three, four, five digits, right? And so for super expanded form, we know that the three should be in the 10 thousandths place, right? Because that's the position that we're multiplying the factor by. So I'm gonna put a three in the 10 thousandths place, and that's gonna be my biggest digit, because you can see that's the biggest factor I'm multiplying by. Then I had an eight in the thousands place. So the eight obviously would be next to the 10 thousandths place, put my comma. Now, if you notice, I don't have a 100, okay? My three is in the tens place. So I have to put a zero here, right? It's a significant zero to make sure that my three ends up in the tens place, because I multiplied by a factor of three. And then you can see I went right to the tens place. So I don't have a ones place, which means I do need to put a zero there. Then my decimals next to my ones place. Then I had a two in the tenths, right? Because I multiplied that by a factor of tenth. And then I jumped right to thousands. I don't have a hundredth, which means again, I need to put a zero here because that way it make, it's a significant zero because it makes sure my digits are in the right place value. And then I'd have a nine in the thousands place. So if you really understood your place value lessons, this is super easy. Now expanded form is even easier because if you're confused at all, you can just multiply these and add them together, right? But I do have a 30,000. Then I had an 8,000, right? Then I had a 30. I don't need to put any zero. So I had a zero in the 100. I don't need to put plus zero, okay? Uh, because it's just assumed that it would be there. Then I had a two tenths, okay? So I'm gonna write it in fraction form. You could also write it in decimal form if you wanted to. And then just to mix it up, I'll write this one in decimal form. I would have nine thousandths, okay? Or you could write nine one thousandths. Either way, again, works. So hopefully that makes uh, uh, some sense and you kind of understand what we're talking about. Let's try a you try problem. So here's a little chart. I made a chart for you. This should be in your notes. Check the uh, link in the description of the video for notes. And uh, go ahead and put what you're going to do is you're going to, if it's in standard form, you're going to write in expanded form and super expanded form. And then if it's in expanded form, you're going to write standard form and super expanded form. And obviously, you're going to fill in the ones that you're missing, okay? And it kind of goes across side to side. So go ahead and push pause, and then push play when you're ready. Check your work. So hopefully, you just paused it. And so here, I see that I had 700 plus 60 plus 5 plus 2 thousandths, okay? And so again, you could wrote that decimal or not. For super expanded form, I'm going to write it up here because I think I'm going to kind of run out of room. I had 7, and that was multiplied by a factor of 100 because it's in the hundreds place plus six times 10, right? Plus five times one, because it's in the ones place, plus two times one, one thousandth, okay? Sometimes uh, you'll see parentheses, sometimes you won't. I always put parentheses because I just think it separates it really nicely. So hopefully you got that one right. This one right here, we had 900,000. So I have a nine in the hundred thousands. My next one is 100, okay? So I don't have anything in the 10 thousands, anything in the thousands. I do have a three right there. I don't have any tens, so I have to put a zero to make sure my five gets in the ones place, okay? So I'm done with those. Then I had a decimal. I had three tenths, zero, hundred, and four thousandths. So again, I'm gonna write this one down here just to make sure I have room. So I had nine times 100,000 plus three times a hundred, right? Because again, three times the factor of the hundred because it's in the hundreds place. Then I had five groups of one. There you go. And then I had three groups of one tenth. Then I had four groups of a th one one thousandth. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. Let's check the next one. Just give me some room. I'm gonna erase my super expanded form from that one. So here I see that I had seven in the 10 thousandths place, okay? Then I had a nine in the thousands. 
My next digit is in the tens place. So I have a zero in the hundred, a seven groups of 10. All right, got that, done with those. I had my next one's a one, so six groups of one. And then I just had something in the hundreds place. So I need to put my decimal. I have to put my zero here, because I had zero tenths and three hundredths, okay? If you just put decimal three, then you made that three tenths, right? Which is different than three hundredths. Three dimes is not the same as three pennies. So make sure you, you put that zero there to hold that place value and make sure your three gets in the right spot. Hopefully you got that right. If not, don't worry about it. It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options online. We appreciate you spending your time with Instruct the Beats. Check out InstructTheBeats.com for all our merchandise, uh, other videos, songs, lessons, you name it. We got it. Again, thank you so much. Instruct the Beats. Out.